good to see all of you again. While we're waiting for everyone to join, we still have quite a few folks jumping on. I actually want to remind you of the high impact takeaways from my last interview, which was with Adam Rosen, if you missed it. He's the founder of a 20 person criminal defense firm in South Florida. He has a three year growth rate of 240%. So he's really growing at a rapid, rapid rate. So he shared one growth needs to be intelligently and actively pursued. He was big on this. Adam has created a mission, values, and, and a business plan for his firm. His marketing spend is a percentage of his projected next year's revenue. So Adam is heavily involved in that marketing personally and no longer actually practices law. Each of those elements contributes to his firm's growth. Number two, he talked about somebody at the top needs to be responsible for marketing, needs to be responsible for intake. You know, I was thinking about it. I can really only recall one instance over my 75 plus interviews that I've done with attorneys where that person was not the founder of the firm. So pulling back from practicing law, at least partially, is necessary to free up time and really focus on marketing. Number two, Adam talks about selecting two marketing channels and really honing in, really working them before adding more. Adam dug deeply into digital marketing and organic social, which are the right places, by the way, for a criminal firm to begin. He's also paid super close attention to client referrals. Those are your best clients. Those three plus professional referrals should be the initial channels for most firms. Okay, so turning to today's session, we have a really good one. My interview it was, is with Sam Abukadir, whose 30-person firm is currently doubling its revenue each year, and she's using a variety of marketing channels. Let's get to it. Welcome, Sam. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to diving in. So to start, Sam, tell us a little bit about your story. Why did you launch the firm? Sure, so about five years ago, um, I was at a firm and I was offered partnership, um, but it was not the right deal for me. Um, and so I decided, well, my husband, my not my not he wasn't my husband at the time, <laughs> but my boyfriend at the time, um, had told me, he's like, Sam, you've got to start your own firm. I've done it. You can do it. You can do it better than me. <laughs> so um, he convinced me to do it. And I never thought that that was the path that I was going to take because I always saw myself as partner. Mm -hmm. um, but I decided to try it out. And I launched the firm, the Florida Probate and Family Law Firm, five years ago. And ever since then, we've gone from myself and a part-time law clerk to now 30 employees, team members. Wow. So it's gone really fast um, and crazy, uh, crazy growth. Yeah. Um, and now my husband is also joining me. So he's oh, he's got his own firm, but he's going to keep it open for marketing purposes. And he's going to come and help me manage this firm. So it's been a great adventure. <laughs> Smart. Wow. That's, that's really cool. That is rapid growth for sure. So 30 staffers, how many attorneys and support staff? So we are nine attorneys, including myself and my husband. Um, and about, what is that? 20, 21 staffers, um, okay. paralegals, intake, um, office manager, operations, um, C-suite members that are fractional, um, marketing, all sorts of people. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you have a full team. So you're a family law probate estate planning firm. What types of cases is the firm primarily handling now? So we are actually about 50, 50 split. Um, mm -hmm. so 50% of our, um, our, our cases are family related. So think divorce, child custody, alimony, paternity, domestic violence, adoption, prenups, postnups, all the juicy stuff. Um, that people do not want to go through. And then the other 50% is probate. And within that window of probate or that umbrella, um, think estate planning. Um, so wills, trusts, durable powers of attorneys, everything you need in case you pass. Um, estates. So we do probates where when people pass and they leave an inheritance and then guardianships. So we do minor and adult guardianships, but the most prevalent types of guardianships are your grandparents who have lost capacity and need somebody to help them with their finances and their health. Got it. Give us an idea of caseload or case volume. Per attorney or within the firm? 
Uh, maybe just within the firm, just an idea. Yeah. So we are, we, we have hundreds of cases. So I think that we are in excess of uh, probably four to 500 cases at this time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah, the load is, is pretty heavy. At yeah. what percentage pace is the firm currently growing, Sam? So in 2022, we were a little over 500% in growth and um, it, sorry, in 2021. And then in 2022, we slowed down a bit. We're over a hundred percent in growth. And I would say we're probably similar this year. Cool. So the first three years of the firm were in excess of 500% growth in terms of revenue. Um, and then the last two years we're, we've been over a hundred percent. That's that's blazing. Tell us what's fueling that growth. What are your primary sources of new business? What do you really attribute that to? That's a great question. <laughs> so if you would have asked me this early on, I would have said you're crazy. Um, <laughs> but we, my husband and I network a lot. Um, we used to work for the probate judges when we were in law school um, and then after law school. So our names are known in the probate community. And then I practiced family law for a little over two years at a previous firm. And so my name is also unique. Um, I'm Palestinian American and there aren't very many Palestinian American attorneys in the South Florida community um, or in Florida in general. We practice all over the state. Um, so I just think that from a cultural perspective, religious perspective, the diversity within the firm. We have people of all different cultures, religions, um, and backgrounds. So any sort of client feels comfortable and knows that there's no judgment. So I think that attracts a lot of, of clients. Um, and then I also think that we have a strong SEO presence. We've been working on the last five years. So that has really helped us pop up as number one in the family and probate arena. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a, a long-term play. That's obviously paying off for, for you. Tell us a little bit about the networking. Obviously, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense that, you know, your reputation, your reputation is sort of, you know, helping you along with the word of mouth and, and the referrals. What specifically do you do to kind of get involved in the community or to kind of really foster those referrals on an ongoing basis? Sure. Um, so, I have sat on multiple um, boards within the community. So I serve with the Junior League of Miami. Um, I'm also a vice chair of the Probate and Guardianship Committee for the Miami-Dade Bar Association. Um, there are different organizations that I've aligned myself with and my husband has aligned himself with um, that help us bring in business. And we also encourage our attorneys to do the same. So there are different you know, organizations that we try to... Um, try to align ourselves with. But more importantly, we also do a lot of nonprofit work. I would say at least five to 10% of the firm's work is pro bono, which I'm very proud of. Um, so we help um, Dave Legal Aid. We also help different domestic violence shelters. Um, we've been featured on um, Discovery Channel with some of our domestic violence cases. Um, and so that's also been able to get the word out regarding the firm. So. Um, another thing that I forgot is within the diversity of the firm. So we have me who's Palestinian American, my husband who's Cuban, Puerto Rican. Um, we have an Antiguan attorney at the firm. We have another Puerto Rican attorney. So if there are like church activities or local Puerto Rican association, um, bar association activities, or, you know, Arab American, you know, activities, we always try to, um, have the firm sponsor those events. Yeah, those those live community events can be can just be a real, real game changer. I've had several guests tell me exactly that. And it really kind of helps you be part of the fabric of the community as well. And, and, you know, get to know get to know who you're who you're working for. I love it. Uh, are you working with a marketing agency for the SEO work? We have multiple vendors. So we have a um, an SEO uh, a website company that helps us with our SEO. We also have a vendor that helps us with our social media presence. Um, we also have another vendor that helps us with our um, Arab American, um, uh, you know, community. Um, so we have multiple vendors that help us in the marketing arena. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about? 
the SEO approach? Uh, in, other, in other words, I know, I know you're not doing the work yourself, but uh, does your agency, do they know, you know, when leads kind of turn into actual paying clients? Is that information that you're kind of sharing back with your agency? Tell us about that ongoing relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So if we didn't know that information, I would probably fire them. <laughs> I think it's um, important to like I think I think like so often though that is the case, right? And <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so ROI is super important. Um, so we have a practice management system um that all of the leads go through. And within that practice management system, we're able to see um what call rail number the the lead came through or what source of of you know place that they came from. And then we're able to do reports every month, go over those reports with our SEO vendors and make sure that we're getting, you know, the right bang for the buck that we're spending on these marketing leads because marketing is not cheap. So it's something that I've actually been studying and trying to, it's the one part of the business that I didn't know anything about. So I had to learn. And so I would say like the last nine to 12 months, I have just been like researching marketing left and right. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's impressive. Uh, the sticking with SEO just for a moment, uh, primarily content. Is that uh, what's kind of driving the SEO and, and what does that look like? Sure. Um, so part of what we create is the SEO um, vendor does blogs for us, which um, has Google keywords, which helps us with our SEO presence. And then we also have um, an internal blog writer that also focuses on putting in more information, specifically like what's going on in the news. Like, is Kim getting divorced? Does she does she have a prenup? Um, uh, Johnny Depp, like we, we always try to keep things relevant and try to write on those things because we know people are going to be researching them. Smart, kind of using that news jacking approach. What's already trending, yeah. let's add some commentary. Yeah, yeah, genius. How uh, do you, can you give us an idea of how much you're paying for the SEO work or kind of what the return on investment looks like? So in terms of pay, it depends on what they're providing. So there's different packages, but it can range anywhere between, I would say $2,500 a month, all the way to $10,000 a month with the, with the website vendor. Um, and then our, are in, I would say that we are probably spending about eight to 10% of our revenue on marketing. So okay. not just on SEO, but in general, it's about eight to 10%. Okay. That's, that's not too bad. That's, that's a good investment. Any idea what your cost per lead might be either overall or kind of per channel? I would say probably around $50. Um, hold on one that's really good. And that's assumed like a qualified lead. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say it's somewhere between 50 to $55. That's based on our September numbers, so it varies. Um, but that's the amount of spend divided by the amount of leads that we received. Um, so it's probably going to go up depending on how many people actually converted, but that's per lead. I was going to ask, do you know then what your conversion rate is about how many of those you're turning into clients? We know um, more or less we're somewhere between 25 to 30% in conversions. Um, so I could probably back out and see how much that is, um, but we're trying to get those numbers up. It's just, depending on the industry you're in, it's very hard because there are leads that are just Googling you and calling you and they might not be qualified leads. So that's the other thing. And then other times we're getting super qualified leads that are ready to retain immediately. Right, right. So do you have anyone in-house on payroll working on marketing specifically? Yes, we have a marketing assistant. That's nice. Uh, how, how else are you kind of spending those marketing dollars? Are you investing in PPC, Google AdWords or, um, Facebook advertising? So we just, so we've, uh, we have local Google, um, service ads. We just started doing, um, paid Google ads. That's different than the local service ads. Um, and then we also do, I'm trying to think, um, we just started a Facebook and Instagram campaign. That's very new. Um, so that's been, um, that, that's probably what we're, I'm trying to think of what else we're doing, but yes, we're doing those things right off the bat. Yeah. So you have a, you have a, a good foundation in place, a little, a little bit of everything. The, how are the LSA ads, those local service ads performing for, for you? And is it better either on family law or state planning? Can you tell us any details there? I would say it's hit or miss. So when it first came out, it was wonderful. 
Yeah. And we were getting a lot out of it. Um, but now I just think there's too many players in the game that have figured it out. Luckily, you know, good for them. Um, but it's just, it's made, I think I was one of the first people that got approved. So, and got the background check. So I think it's slowed down now. And then jumping to Google ads, we, we did it about four years ago and it wasn't great. And we're doing it again now. And it's, what I've learned is you have to take the risk of spending money to try to figure out how it's doing and then continue to tweak until you figure out what works and what doesn't work. And it's just like this constant back and forth of just trying to figure it out. So it's hard. Yeah. Any sense which ads have been performing best on Google ads or is it too early to, to tell that? The family, the family side works better. Okay. And what are you specifically talking about? What do those ads look like? How are you, how are you kind so, of presenting? So anything divorce related, um, in the state of Florida on July 1st, the law just changed regarding alimony. So there's no more permanent alimony. Um, so anything alimony related, anything divorce related that usually does well, we're getting the leads. It's the conversion that's a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. Got it. Are you sending them through any kind of funnel, uh, the ad link to a landing page, any kind of screening happening before? We're in, the, we're in the process with Google ads. There is a landing page, but there isn't a follow-up funnel, but it's something that we're in the process of creating. Yeah, yeah, that could help with some of that screening, right? Some of that kind of qualifying so that not everything is, is reaching you or reaching the firm. Yeah, that makes sense. And then are you basically offering like a consultation? Is that what the call to action is? Is it a free consult? Yeah. Or? Yep, it's a free consult. Um, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So the process is they see the ad, they call in, they're put into our uh, lead management system, intake immediately um, schedules them for a consult within 24, usually within 24 hours, sometimes within 48 hours if we're booked. Um, and then they speak to an attorney for about 15 to 20 minutes. If it needs to be a deeper dive because their case is more complicated, then we set them up for a strategy session, which is a paid strategy session. Got it. Got it. So that's kind of what your intake process looks like, what you just described. Yep. Uh, any follow up for those folks who maybe inquire and then don't sign up? Right yep. Now? yep. So we have different campaigns um, through our lead management system. So depending on how that call goes with the, with the attorney, the attorney will put them in a different campaign depending on if we want to nurture them as a future client or if this is definitely not the type of client we want. Um, so there are different campaigns that they go through. Sure, sure. Uh, what about texting campaigns? Have you have you tried texting and or just emailing? Yeah, texting. Yeah, we do texting. We do emailing. Um, we do phone calls. Um, they're called gas calls. So even when a client finishes their case, we'll still check up on them after six months, after 12 months, after 18 months. So we, we still have like the follow up. I'm sure the regular touch ins even after even for the past clients contribute to your referral flow, I would assume keeping in touch yes. with those past clients. Do you, yes. do you keep in touch in any other ways? Do you have a newsletter or anything for those past clients or? We do. We have a newsletter that goes out one to two times a month um, and we'll touch upon something that's going on in the family world or in the probate world. Smart, smart. Uh, let's talk about social media for a second. You're at Lawyer Lady Boss, which I love that handle. It's so good. Is social media a sizable lead driver for the firm or why is it worth your time to be on social? So I did not know if I wanted to make it, you know, a source of, of referrals because again, they're cold calls, they're cold leads. Um, they're strangers, right? Um, and our best leads are, are warm leads, warm referrals, people who we know that are referring us over. Um, I would say in the first three to four years of my social media presence, it wasn't really sending us a lot of referrals. This year has been a game changer. We get a lot of a lot of referrals. We get a lot of people that they might find us on Google or they might find us on through some other way, um, but then they'll research us on social media. <laughs> so then they'll see, oh, okay, she has a presence. Oh, okay, you know, she's represented celebrity clients or high net worth clients, and then they feel a little bit more comfortable. So I would say 
it has been really, really um, positive this year for us. How many qualified leads per week or per month would you say you generate through social media now? I would say we'd probably get one to two leads per week. Nice, nice. And I think you make a good point of, you know, it's an important piece of the puzzle, right? They know about you, they've heard about you, they check you out on social media, then they're able to really get a sense of what it would be like working with you, working with the firm, right? Building that trust before they maybe ever even reach out to you. So they're maybe not as cold as they were once were, right? They're, you're really kind of, you know, putting that educational content, that helpful content out there not only to establish yourself as the authority, but convey, you know, your caring and, and of course your expertise. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, what, what type of case typically comes through social media? A family case. Okay. Um, we get a lot of people that want divorce advice, uh, want child custody advice, paternity, um, those types of things. Can you take us through your approach on social media a little bit? I, I know you mentioned that you're working with a vendor. Can you tell us kind of what the vendor is doing and then what you're doing or what the firm's doing to contribute? Sure. Um, so our vendor is called Social Fluence, um, and they do a content calendar every single month for us. Um, we provide them with pictures, videos, um, reels, all sorts of things, but they'll give us the strategy. So they'll say, you know, when my videographer will come once or twice a month to record, um, they'll say, do a video on um, alimony, do a video on child custody, answer this question. So they'll give me direction um, on what should be, you know, discussed. And then other times we'll be traveling for conferences or I'll be teaching up at the university that I've been teaching at for the past five years. And they'll say, you know, Sam, take a picture or I'll just randomly take a picture or do a video and send it to them and say, hey, put this in for content next month. Um, so it just revolves really around what my life is that month or the next month. And then we'll go from there. Yeah, it seems like you're kind of taking a nice mix of, you know, look inside your everyday work and the firm and the business, but also kind of sprinkling in personality, some of your personal life and hobbies. Is that accurate? Yes, yes. I didn't know which direction to go with it. So at first it was just the firm, but then I realized my personal life is like intertwined with the firm. So I might as well show my husband and I might as well show that I had a kid and, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Yeah. And it builds on that no like, and trust factor too. Right. And you know, you're, you're an interesting person, not just, you know, people kind of connecting with an organization. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Uh, are you putting any money into boosting those Instagram posts or any of your social organic social posts? Very little, very, very little. Um, I would say early on in the first couple of years we were this year, not so much. So that growth has been pretty organic. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. How often are you posting approximately? Uh, three to five times a week. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, are you receiving referrals? I mean, obviously Instagram, TikTok, they're national platforms. Are you receiving leads that you're then able to kind of refer out either out of state leads or, or otherwise? So I would say on social media, not so much, um, but we get people from our SEO that will call in on um, criminal matters, immigration matters, employment matters, and we're able to refer those out. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm interested, Sam, are you using AI in your practice, either for marketing or in your daily work? Me personally, no, but I know my team members are. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a whole, yeah, it's a whole can of worms to, to open that conversation. But yeah, <laughs> what about, I always like to ask too, what about tools, any software that you use that you would recommend for other attorneys? Um, so I would say that I love using Notion. Um, Notion is what our social media team uses for the content calendar, but we're also using it for building out different manuals. Um, and then what else do I love? I can't think at the moment. That's the only thing that's sticking out at yeah, me right good. now. That's a good one. Uh, what kind of manuals like SOPs and, and internal, internal procedures? Yep. 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 So we're building them out with, um, Loom. That's another one. We use Loom, um, we use Zoom for some of them, but we're able to type out different um, SOPs and then insert videos so that when new team members are coming in, they can just look at that manual. 
What a time saver. I mean, that that can really take some time, obviously, up front, that kind of one time time investment. But man, it can really create some serious efficiencies. And yeah, that's that's smart. You mentioned your C-suite is fractional. Tell me about that. Sure. Um, so I have been part of a um, law firm coaching um, company called How to Manage a Small Firm, and they offer um, fractional C-suite um, members such as a CEO, COO, CFO, CMO, um, and I'm currently using them for um, some of those services, but then I also have other fractional coaches um, that I use outside of the coaching services. Why do you feel like having those coaches is so valuable? What does it really kind of help you to do? It has helped me. I wish that somebody would have told me from day one when I started my firm, invest in coaching, because you don't know what you don't know. As crazy, as stupid as that sounds, but I, if I would have gone back five years, I wouldn't have known that different reporting would have helped me figure out how to bring in more leads, what to invest in, who to invest in, like all sorts of things. So if I would have started out with the coaching early on, we would be triple the size we are today. Whoa, that, that yeah, that would be intense. Uh, there's probably a community aspect too, I would assume that is probably pretty helpful, kind of that mastermind type. Yep, and you just, you hit on the head. We do a lot of mastermind um, groups that are outside of the coaching company. Um, so just separate mastermind groups that we're a part of like two or three times a year. And it really helps us focus um, and gives us direction on what issues we're, we're struggling with. Yeah. I mean, why make the same mistakes that maybe someone else has made when you can just do what you know works? Are those with uh, other attorneys and are they live? Are you, are you meeting up live? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're um, mostly live um, and some of them are with company owners that are not law firms, but for the majority of our masterminds, they are law firm owners. And we try to find mastermind groups that are a good mix. So people that are at the same level that we are in terms of um, employees, revenue, growth mindset. Um, but we also like to include people that are doing double or triple so that we know, you know, we're going through this, what happened when you were going through this? And we just get those quick answers. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's anything more valuable than that. Yeah, I, I agree. Can you share maybe one of your biggest mistakes or lessons learned in growing the firm? Yeah. So I said it earlier, but I wish that I would have invested in coaching much earlier on. And then the other thing that comes to mind is we're, I have um, a money mindset issue um, because I didn't grow up with money. So it's been really hard um, spending money and investing in the right people um, because I'm always afraid. Um, but it's something I've worked through in the last five years and I'm glad we're a multi-million dollar firm. Like we worked through it. Yes. Um, and so I would say that I wish that I would have invested like I am now in senior level employees and team members. So most people will invest in babies because it's cheaper labor. It's much more affordable, but in reality, if you invest in senior level talent that knows more than you as an owner, your business will flourish. I think that's really, really good advice. So Sam, before we wrap up, I always like to ask if a lawyer watching has time to adopt one, maybe two of your tips, what would you recommend? Sorry, can you repeat that again? Yeah, if a lawyer watching has time to adopt maybe one or two of your tips, what would you recommend? I would recommend um, talking to other attorneys, networking as much as you can to bring in business because marketing is the key to having your firm grow. you got to bring in the business to be able to grow the, the people. Um, and then another tip is surround yourself with positive minded people. So, um, you know, elevate yourself, make your circle a circle of people you trust and people that you can ask questions to. I love that. Surround yourself with those positive people. Network, network, network. I love it, Sam. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and your time today. You were super generous. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so lots of great stuff from Sam today, right? Here are the key takeaways I see. Number one, networking remains a potent and affordable marketing channel. 
more than half, much more than half of my previous guests lean heavily on relationship building in their early years. A few in narrow niches still rely almost exclusively on professional referrals. If your marketing budget is tight, I recommend you devote time to building referral relationships to save time. The connections can certainly be made online. Number two from Sam, having a diverse team opens productive marketing avenues. Nearly a dozen of my guests have successfully marketed directly to their ethnic communities. Several use Facebook groups for outreach. Others can you know, use those Facebook ads in, in their native languages. All found the tailored marketing profitable. Number three, social media takes time to deliver. Let me repeat that. Social media takes time to deliver. Like SEO, social media is a long-term marketing play. Also like SEO, there's no guarantee of success, but following proven paths will certainly improve your odds. The two most certain paths are one, discussing legal issues that affect the average consumer and two, boosting your most popular videos. Number four, fractional executives can be an affordable way to add senior talent. Few law firms are large enough to sort of justify the expense of full-time senior execs, right? Buying a few hours a month of C-level time can really be a cost-effective way around that sort of cost limitation. And you don't need to make a monthly commitment if you find your own talent. So try advertising on Indeed or on LinkedIn. We found both sources helpful here at James. And lastly, number five, masterminds can help you intelligently address challenges. We've heard this time and time again from our guests, the power of mastermind groups. Ideally, your group will be comprised of attorneys with growth mindsets and similarly sized or, or somewhat larger firms, right? Regardless, putting multiple owner minds to work on the issues you face will certainly help in overcoming them. All right. I hope my interview with Sam has been helpful. My next interview, you won't want to miss it. It's with a solo civil litigator and family law attorney whose revenue grew 150% just this year. And remember, if you need social media video help for your firm, let's talk. We're already working with many of the attorneys here live on this session. We handle all of it, including scripting, shooting, editing, posting, boosting. You just need to show up for a short, streamline 30 minute remote video shoot each month so we can batch record your content and then we handle everything else. I'll share a link now to learn more about our marketing amplifier social media program and I look forward to talking to you soon. See you back here next time. Take care. Keep marketing. Bye-bye.